Welcome back to Church Online. We are starting a new series called Game Plan. It is all about learning how to follow God's plan for your life. Today we're learning that Jesus has good plans for you. Some of you might be thinking, who, me? I don't know. I don't know if God's got plans for me. He doesn't have a plan for me. Well, today we're going to find out why you can truly believe that Jesus has good plans for you. To find out more about that, I want you to watch this quick video. Oh, hey there. Name's Todd. Bet you're wondering what I'm doing here. Figured you were. Last week we had varsity basketball tryouts and it didn't go very well. Yeah, as you can see, I didn't make the team. I'm not very good. So I decided to invest in a personal trainer. And I went to Trainers R Us, but they were too expensive. So then I went to Craigslist, like literally my friend Craig who had a list of people that he recommended. So now I'm waiting on my friend Craig's mom's, cousin's, brother's, dog's trainer or something. Yep, that'd be me. My name's Tony, Tony the trainer. Sorry I was late. I was teaching Charlie how to roll over. Is Charlie a toddler? Does he not know how to roll over? Nah, Charlie's a cocker spaniel. <laughs> what? You're literally a dog trainer? How are you gonna teach me how to play basketball? Hey, you listen here. I have happened to have trained one of the most phenomenal basketball players of all time. Oh yeah? Who? You ever heard of Air Bud? Are you kidding me? You mean a dog that was in a movie about playing basketball? That wasn't real. Yeah, 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 he's as real as the hair on my toenails, okay? Now are you ready to learn some lessons or what? I mean, if you think you can teach me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm not the one that didn't make the team and had to hire a trainer. It wasn't my fault I didn't make the team. I tried to find my good luck charm and bring it to the tryouts, but I couldn't find it. What was your good luck charm? My lucky parrot. Your lucky parrot? Yeah, his name's Petey. Okay, well Petey ain't here, so forget about it. All right, so what am I gonna be learning today? I'm glad that you asked. I thought of some plays that I would like you to learn. Cool, what are they? Okay, the first play is called the turnip trick. First you go over here and you find yourself a moose. Doesn't have to be a big moose, but just a little moose, okay? You get on the moose's back, and you're gonna grab him by the antlers and put the ball right there. What in the right world there. are you talking about? This doesn't make any sense. Okay, I see how it is. You're not gonna be able to follow my game plan. Come with me. So what exactly are we doing here? It's simple, shortstop. I'm here to teach you how to do an alley-oop. What? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. You don't have to be in an alley to do an alley-oop. Oops. All this is ridiculous. Well then let me teach you the pick and roll. Finally, something I can understand. Okay, so the pick and roll is when you distract the other player by picking the nose and then you roll away with the ball and shoot it in the basket. Are you kidding me? This is getting way out of hand. You claim to be teaching me a new game plan, but none of this is making any sense. It's like that sometimes. Like what? Well, sometimes the game plan we think we should have is different than the game plan that God has for us. And not just in basketball, but also in life. Uh, I'm confused. Look, you think you know what you're doing with your life? You think you need to follow your game plan? No, 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 forget about it. You need to follow God's game plan. You need to follow what he wants for your life. Yeah, I see what you mean. Good, now the kids today are gonna learn about a pretty awesome promise that God makes to each of us. God's got good plans for your life. It's time for you to dive into God's game plan and learn all about it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, I think so. Hey, did you know that Michael Jordan was afraid of muskrats? It's so true. God really does have good plans for you no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter how bad you think you might have messed up or how bad you may even think you are, Jesus loves you and cares for you. You're going to find out more about that in our lesson today. But before we get too far, first we need to find out what you got to know. 
Hey kids, it's me, Callie from the Valley, and I'm like here to tell you like oh, what you gotta know. I'm like so excited to start a brand new series called Game Plan. Today we're like talking about how God has like totally cool plans for us. So every time today somebody asks you what you gotta know, you tell them. I will follow God's amazing plan. People are always like, Callie, what are your plans? What are you gonna do with your life? Like, where's Waldo? I'm like, first of all, Waldo's hat is like so last year. A grody. Second of all, I don't know what my plans are. I'm not like good enough to do totally awesome things with my life. But then God, he's like, girl, yes you are. Follow me and everything will change. It's like, okay God, you're right. No matter what I've done, if I follow you, you have an awesome plan for my life. Cause you like care about me. So every time today somebody asks you what you gotta know, you tell them. I will follow God's amazing plan. And that is what you gotta know. I'm Callie from the Valley saying TTYL. I told you I would TTYL. What you gotta know? Are you ready for the best rest of your life? Uh, hello, Megan, you sweat. All right, no time for 1990. We gotta start. Okay. Okay, first I'm gonna ask a few questions to see if you qualify for the perfect plan. Are you willing to eat some healthy fruits and vegetables? Yeah, I love fresh fruits and veggies. Have you ever walked a mile in 16 minutes or less? Yes, definitely. Have you ever told a lie before? Well, yeah, sure. Everyone in this whole world except Jesus has told a lie. Well, sorry, buddy, then you don't qualify for the perfect plan. Bad people cannot follow this plan. Only perfect people can follow the perfect plan. So, sorry, buddy, you're a no-go. Uh, I'm okay with that. Uh, who would be okay without a plan? People who don't have plans would get into their smelly, stinky cars, and drive into a swampy marsh and never smell good again. Uh, it really is okay. You know, today we're learning that God has a good plan for each and every one of our lives. You know, it doesn't matter how bad a person is, Jesus cares and has a good plan. When you follow his plan, everything changes. Well, okay, that sounds easy enough. I could even run a five kid to show that I'm strong enough for this info. Uh, you know, Megan, you sweat, that's really not necessary. Well, I'll probably do it anyway. Have you ever run a 5K with, with a dog sled strapped to your back with four large dogs in Alaska during record freezing temperatures? Uh, no, uh, but I'm guessing you have. No, that doesn't sound fun at all. I just said that because you look like someone who would do that sort of thing. You know, you really have some weird thoughts making you sweat. I know, right? I mean, yesterday I thought I could drink a gallon of chocolate milk in under five minutes. I was wrong. I'm actually hanging on to the store to get some carpet stain removal. My poor aunt's white carpet will never be the same. Bye! Uh, ew. Good luck with that. Bye! I told you I would a TTYL. What you gotta know? So today's Bible story is found in the book of Luke chapter 19. Where is it found? It's a story about a man named Zacchaeus. Everybody say Zacchaeus. So Zacchaeus was a tax collector, which you might know, people didn't really like tax collectors. 
Tax collectors took everyone's money and gave it to the government. And back then the tax collectors were not usually very honest. So people didn't like Zacchaeus because he was known to be dishonest. One day, Zacchaeus heard that Jesus was teaching nearby and he wanted to get a good look at this man that he had heard all about. He heard about how Jesus heals and loves and tells people all about God. And when he arrived, he saw a huge crowd surrounding Jesus. But the problem was, Zacchaeus was really short and he couldn't see over all of the people. Maybe some of you guys have been in that situation before. Maybe you've been to a parade or a show. And as a kid, you're a little bit shorter than a lot of the adults and you can't see over them. Maybe you had a dad or a family member even put you up on your shoulders so you could see past them. Well, Zacchaeus didn't have anybody to put him on their shoulders. But what he did, he had an idea and he instead saw a tree and he began to climb it so that he could get a better view of Jesus. Pretty smart, right? Since no one could put him on their shoulders, instead, he found a tree. And don't you guys like climbing trees? Probably fun too. So while he's in the tree, Jesus saw him and Jesus called him by name. Jesus said, Zacchaeus, come on down from there. I must come to your house as a guest today. The religious people couldn't believe it. They could not believe that Jesus would go to Zacchaeus' house, to a tax collector's house. They didn't like Zacchaeus at all, and they expected Jesus to feel the same way. They saw Jesus at Zacchaeus' house and said, how could Jesus possibly hang out with that guy? He's a sinner. They didn't get it. They didn't understand why Jesus would spend time with them. But Jesus was not impressed with the religious people. They were supposed to be the ones sharing the love of God, yet they were treating Zacchaeus like he didn't matter. Jesus said, I have come to save lost people like Zacchaeus. He was teaching the religious people that if they really wanted to do God's will, they would show love to all people, including people like Zacchaeus instead of ignoring them and treating them like they didn't even matter. In your lesson today, you're gonna learn no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter how bad you think you are, how bad you may have messed up, Jesus loves and cares about you. And he has good plans for you. I told you I would a TTYL. What you gotta know? My name is Regina Teast, but nobody goes by Regina anymore, so you can just call me R. R. Teast. Now, I'm just working on a painting right now, but I think I need a break, so I thought that you could help me with today's power verse. See, the problem is I sleepwalk at night, and last night as I was painting the power verse, I started using pictures instead of words. So now I need you to help me figure out what it's supposed to say. Let's take a look at it. For eyeball, oh no, I bet it's eye. No, the blueprint, hmm, what could that word be? <gasps> Plans, I have for you, says the Lord. They are, oh, plans, for thumbs up. No, that can't be it. Well, what is that supposed to mean? Oh, good, and not for disaster. To give you a, ah, oh, is that a calendar? With the year 3000, well that's far into the future. Oh, future, I bet that's it. And a hope, Jeremiah 29 11. That's it. Great job, boys and girls. Now, let's make sure that we don't forget it. So everyone stand up and say it with me on the count of three. One, two, three. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Jeremiah 29, 11. Great job, everyone. You can all have a seat. Now, would you like to see what I've been painting today? <laughs> see, this morning I had 
something new for breakfast and I was inspired to paint it because it was so beautiful. But I'm going to warn you, you should not try this for breakfast because I've had a tummy ache all day. Anyway, what I had for breakfast today was rainbow beans and rainbow milk. Doesn't it just look wonderful? But it's not, I promise, don't eat it. Anyway, that's my lovely painting of the day. Now thank you all again for your help today. I'll see you later boys and girls. Bye bye. I told you I went a TTYL. What you gotta know? Hey kids. I'm so excited to be here with you today. I'm excited about our series, Game Plan, and I feel like we should start with a song before I give you the call to action. Have you ever heard the song, Zacchaeus Was a Wee Little Man? If you do, I want you to sing it with me, just the first line. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. How many of you heard that song? I used to sing it all the time when I was little. But today we're talking about God's game plan. And God has good plans for your life. Now, you might be thinking, oh, I don't know about that. Doesn't Jesus know all of the things that I've done? Doesn't he know how bad I've sinned? Doesn't he know that I'm really not that great? I don't deserve good plans. And maybe sometimes you feel like Zacchaeus from our Bible story. Remember, he was an outcast and nobody liked him. And people avoided him and stayed away from him because of what he did. He was a tax collector and a crooked one at that. He was always ripping people off and doing them wrong. And after all of that, the people decided not to have anything to do with him. No one wanted to be around him and no one cared about Zacchaeus. And I bet he was lonely. Doesn't he sound like he would be lonely because nobody wanted to be around him? And have you ever felt that way before? Like nobody cared about you? I know I have. Or maybe you found yourself saying something like, it's not fair, nobody even loves me, I'm a loser. It's like that song, nobody likes me, everybody hates me, guess I'll go eat worms. Have you sang that song before? <laughs> I have. Well today we're gonna learn the lesson that Zacchaeus learned. Are you guys ready to do that with me? So point number one today says this, Jesus cares when nobody else will. So on the count of three, I want you all to say that with me. Are you ready? One, two, three. Jesus cares when nobody else will. Remember Zacchaeus was a loser and nobody cared about him. And he felt all alone and he decided it was time to do something about it. He heard Jesus was different than everyone else and he thought he would check him out when he came to town. Well, sadly, Zacchaeus wasn't even treated like a loser when he went to see Jesus entering the town. He was shorter than everybody and couldn't see, but no one even cared, right? He really wanted to see Jesus though. So what did he do? You're right. He ended up climbing a tree. How many of you like to climb trees? I used to do it all the time when I was little. I fell one time off a tree and I have a scar on my side because I cut it on a tree. <laughs> So it must have been tough to be Zacchaeus, but do you know what happened, remember what happened next in the Bible story? Jesus walked straight through the crowd, because you know, Jesus probably already knew that Zacchaeus was going to do that, right past everyone else, and he went up to Zacchaeus in that tree. Jesus, Jesus noticed him, Jesus cared about him, and Jesus cares about you. It doesn't matter what everyone else might think about you, Jesus cares. Jesus loves you you. And now you might be thinking, well, wait a second, but I've done a lot of bad stuff. I've sinned a lot. There's no way that Jesus still loves me and cares about me. But it's important that you never forget. And this is number point number two. It says this, no matter, no matter how bad you are, Jesus has a plan for you. Okay. On the count of three, I want you to say that with me. Are you ready? One, two, three. No matter how bad you are, Jesus has a plan for you. Don't forget, Zacchaeus was a big time sinner. He ripped people off and he took their money, so he did do wrong things. And Zacchaeus was so bad, his whole city didn't want anything to do with him. They didn't go anywhere near him. And he was bad news, right? 
And maybe you're like Zacchaeus, maybe you filled your life with bad habits and sins. So just like, I have this little bag here. So, you know, I want you to look at this bag and this bag is gonna represent your, represent your life, okay? So maybe you've cheated or lied. How many of you have ever told a lie? How many of you have ever cheated on a test before? Okay, so maybe you got into the habit of doing that because it just felt right and you didn't wanna get in trouble and so you just got into the habit, right? Or maybe you have said some mean and hateful things to others and you've hurt others. And maybe it's your brother or your sister, maybe it's your neighbors and you have said mean things to them, you weren't kind to them or you bragged to them like you're better at this than them, okay? So maybe you've done that or maybe you've messed up and there's just no no way you can come back from your sinful life now and you've gone way too far and you're too bad right but boys and girls it's important that you never forget that jesus died on the cross for you it's important to remember that jesus died on the cross for your sins he died for all those sins that we just mentioned right and when he did that he forgave you of your sins and Jesus wants you to be free from your sin free from all the bad things that you've done and Jesus wants you to follow his plan for your life and here's the great news are you ready point number three it says this when you follow his plan guess what everything changes on the count of three I want you to say that with me one two three when you follow his plan, everything changes. That's right, everything changes, everything. When you choose to live for Jesus and follow his plan for your life, everything changes, your whole life. You become brand new. All of the sin and the bad things that you once did are no longer a part of your life. And you get a fresh start, a do-over. Does that mean you're not gonna sin anymore? No, you still will. But now you have a relationship with Jesus and because you love him, you're gonna ask for him to help you when it comes to make those choices again. And out of your love for him, you're gonna do everything you can to show him that you love him. That doesn't mean we're perfect, that doesn't mean we're not gonna sin, because guess what, we will. But we're gonna ask God to forgive us, and he's gonna forgive us. And he's gonna love us, because that's what he does. And remember what happened to Zacchaeus? When Jesus saw him and showed him how much he cared, Zacchaeus decided to change his whole life and start doing what was right. He was a great example of how when you follow God's plan, everything changes. And even when Zacchaeus was bad and no one cared about him, Jesus did. And Jesus had good plans for his life. And it's the same for you and for me. No matter who you are or what you've done, Jesus cares about you and he has good plans for your life. The Bible said that Jesus doesn't want anyone to perish. He loves everybody, and he wants everybody to come to know him. It doesn't matter what you've done. God loves you, and he wants you to come to him, no matter what you've done. Because he is going to change your life. And out of your love for him, you're going to change your life. Okay? So I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray that if you feel like no one loves you or cares about you, to remember that God does. And it doesn't matter what you've done, he will always love you. And he loves you now, and he will love you then. And he will help you tell your friends about that. Because how many of you have friends that don't know Jesus? And maybe they're lonely and they need somebody in their life. Maybe you know somebody that their parents are going through a divorce. Or maybe you have parents that are going through a divorce. Or maybe you just have something in your, in your family that's just not right, and, and God, you just need God. And to remember that God is always with you and that he loves you and cares about you, okay? So I am gonna pray that you will choose to follow God's game plan and see everything in your life change for the good, okay? Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for your word, the Bible. We thank you for what it teaches us and that it shows us how much you love us. And I thank you for the story of Zacchaeus that we just heard about today. God, that it's just another example that you love us no matter what. God, it doesn't matter what we've done. And so I just pray for every kid, every adult that's listening that, God, you would help them to know that you love them so much and you just want them to choose you. It doesn't matter what they've done. It doesn't matter the sins that they've done. And so I pray for all of us listening 
God, that you would just help us to remember that you love us no matter what. Help us to choose you and help us to put you first and to know that even if we do mess up, God, we can ask for forgiveness and you forgive us. And you love us and your Holy Spirit works in us so that we can have the courage and the strength to do what we know is right. God, we love you and we just commit our day to you. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, I love you kids and I hope you have a fantastic day and I hope to see you soon. I told you I would a TTYL. What you gotta know? Well, what a great service we've had today. I am so thankful for the Bible. I'm thankful that we can read the Bible and we can see just how much Jesus loves us. And the Bible is filled with that story, right? And so whenever you feel down like, oh, I did it again. I've been trying so hard not to lie or I've been trying so hard to be kind to my sister, or I've been trying so hard to obey my parents, but I keep failing. I want you to remember that you're not perfect, right? And God doesn't expect you to be perfect. And when you do fail, you can say, Jesus, please forgive me. And God, please help me to do better next time. And God will help you, okay? But I don't want you to ever think like, I just, I can't do it anymore. I just keep making the same bad choices all the time. What do you need to do when that happens? You need to ask God forgiveness and to remember that He is going to help you. 
and to pray all the time and read the Bible and ask God to help you. Okay, so remember what we learned today. Remember the story of Zacchaeus, that God loves everybody no matter what. Okay, even now, if you've asked him into your heart for the first time, even after you've asked Jesus into your heart, you still are going to make mistakes sometimes. And God just wants you to come to him and say, please forgive me. And Jesus, would you help me next time? Okay, so that's my encouragement to you today, to remember that God wants to forgive you. And even when you make a mistake, guess what? He loves you, and He desires to have a relationship with you, no matter what. Okay? Well, I hope you guys have a great week, and I hope to see you soon.